hello and thank you for joining us today. I'm Kristen Norton, the Optic Studio Product Manager here at ZMAX. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce part one of our two-part webinar series with Lumerical. Today, we're going to be discussing the interoperability between ZMAX's software and Lumerical software. Uh, and we'll be demonstrating how the combination of these software packages enables you to simulate optical systems with both nanoscale and macro scale optics. So, first I'd like to introduce our two presenters. We have Akil Bagat from ZMAX, and so he'll be presenting all of the slides for ZMAX and Optic Studio. Akil is an optical engineer here at ZMAX, and he works on the Optic Studio Engineering Services team. We also have Amy Liu from Lumerical, and she's the product manager there. And Amy will be presenting all of the Lumerical slides and, and walking you through the demonstrations of Lumerical software. So, uh, one other thing before we get started, you'll notice that there's a question section of the uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, at the end of the webinar, Akil and Amy will be available to answer your questions, uh, but you're welcome to submit the questions at any point throughout this webinar. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to our presenters. Akil, do you want to take it away? Sure. Thank you, Kristen. So some background on ZMAX. ZMAX delivers software training and support for optical laser illumination and optomechanical system design. We've been developing and supporting optical illumination software for over 25 years, starting in 1990 when Dr. Ken Moore founded the ZMAX Development Corporation to commercialize ZMAX optical design software. We now call this software Optic Studio. The initial version of Optic Studio were aimed at the classical lens design uh, problems, but over the years, the capabilities and breadth of systems it could handle have expanded immensely. ZMAX is headquartered in Seattle, Washington, but we have offices globally in the UK, China, Japan, and Taiwan. We have a ZMAX virtual prototype product suite, including Optic Studio, Lens Mechanic, and our hand-on training. Optic Studio, as I discussed, is optical simulation software. Lens Mechanics allows you to bring those optical components into SolidWorks and trace the mechanical fixtures and any mounts that you would need. And then our hands-on training is training led by our engineers in both the Lens Mechanics team and the Optic Studio team to help you learn both about the optics and how to use our software. So this is Amy from Lumerical Solutions. Really happy to be here today. We're based in Vancouver, Canada. The company started in 2003 in a tiny solarium by four photonic designers. But today our products are licensed by some of the world's most innovative organizations in more than 40 countries, including 800 plus customer sites, 10 of the 15 largest technology firms, and 46 of the top 50 engineering and technology research universities. And here's a list of our products. For optical simulations, we have FDTD solutions and mode solutions. And these products include all the optical solvers that can be used with Optic Studio. So we'll be focusing on those solvers today. We also have device for electrical and thermal simulations, as well as interconnect for circuit and system level simulations of photonic integrated circuits. Modern optical devices often incorporate both nanoscale and macroscopic optical systems which brings about the need to accurately model a single optical path as it traverses through different regimes. In order to combat this problem, ZMAX and Lumerical have collaborated to allow a seamless transition between Lumerical's solutions and Optic Studio's array and wave-based solutions. So as Akil mentioned, no single solver can accurately and efficiently capture optical effects at both the nanoscale and macroscale levels, since they tend to require different types of physics. So nanoscale optics require simulations of electromagnetic fields, and this is what all of Lumerical's optical solvers do. Very often, direct simulations of Maxwell's equations are necessary. And these simulations tend to have very few approximations, which makes them very accurate and really ideal for simulations of light interaction with wavelengths or sub-wavelength scale features. However, they also tend to be very time-consuming and memory-intensive, which makes them not practical for optically large geometries. Uh, on the other end, macroscopic optics are based mainly on the ray and wave approximation models of light, both of which are available in Optic Studio. The ray model is accurate for systems where any optically relevant components are much larger than wavelength, while the wave model approximation is accurate for relatively simple components on the wavelength scale, but this does start to break down with more complicated structures. So OLED and LED display is an example application where both nanoscale and macroscale optics are required for optimizing the device performance. Here you would want to use ray tracing methods to design your macroscopic device, which in this case is a lamp with dimensions 20 millimeters by 300 millimeters. 
Now, when you zoom into one of the pixels, you'll see that these devices often have very thin layers, uh, which are often tens or hundreds of nanometers thick. And sometimes you may even have nanoscale structures like the photonic crystal patterning that you see here, where the dielectric rods are placed about a hundred, uh, few hundred nanometers apart. So in order to capture the effect of light interaction with these nanoscale features, nanoscale optics will be required. So let's take a look at uh, the optical solvers for nanoscale optics. Lumerical Solutions provides a variety of electromagnetic field solvers to address nanophonic photonic applications with different length scales. So even at the nanoscale level, no single solver is really ideal for all types of problems, and often multiple solvers are required for the most efficient workflow. So first we have the stack optical solver. Uh, this is based on analytical methods and really meant for multilayer stack analysis. For the solvers that are based on direct simulations of Maxwell's equations, uh, we have first the eigenmode solver, which allows you to analyze the eigenmodes of a waveguide or fiber. For propagation in large guided devices, we have the 2.5D variational FDTD solver, as well as the eigenmode expansion solver. And finally, for light propagation in truly arbitrary 3D geometries, we have defined a difference time domain solver. And we'll see some examples today uh, using all the different types of solvers. Optic Studio has three modes of operation. Sequential, physical optics propagation, which is a tool within sequential mode, and non-sequential mode. Sequential mode is used for classical optical design, used to design imaging systems, afocal systems, and other sequential designs. Physical optics propagation is for laser and fiber systems, and it's used to optimize laser beams and optimize fiber coupling, among many other uses with beam propagation. Non-sequential mode for illumination, lighting, and stray light is used to design for uniform illumination from real sources, stray light analysis, optomechanical design, and other non-sequential designs. Historically, there have been many challenges associated with the conversion from nanoscale to macroscale optics, including the need to exchange data between electromagnetic field solvers and rays or wave models. It's manual, which can involve many mistakes, and it's not always intuitive. Because of this, ZMAX and Lumerical are collaborating with the goal of providing end users a simple workflow for a wide variety of applications. So currently there are a number of ways to exchange data between ZMAX and Lumerical's optical solvers, and these are available in Lumerical's optical solvers for our most recent release in June, uh, which you can download from our website, and is compatible with Optic Studio version 16 and beyond. So the first type of uh, interoperability is that uh, EM field information can now be exchanged using the ZMAX beam file or ZBF file format. And this is relevant for most applications. Uh, it includes a set of script commands, so ZBF import and export for when you want to store the field in one software and use it in another as a source. ZBF read or write for loading and saving field data into your current workspace. And there's also a UI component that you can use to carry out the same functionalities. So for some applications, the direct exchange of EM field information doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, for example, for OLED and LED display, uh, you need to convert the field information into a ray set first before importing it into Optic Studio using a source file object. And for now, this does require some additional scripting, as you'll see in an example that we'll show later. And uh, the same goes for um, other formats. For example, if you want to simulate a rough surface with an EM solver and extract the BSDF function, you also need to do a bit of post-processing to get the data in a format that can be read by Optic Studio. And uh, we're very happy to provide some sample scripts to help you get started. But uh, and uh, depending on the type of feedback we get from the end users, uh, we would certainly like to build this directly into the product in the near future. Today, we're going to be going over application examples for lens to fibers and waveguides using the ZBF format, an OLED and LED display using importing ray files from Lumerical, and going over a BSDF file, which is still a work in progress. Next week, we're going to have a separate webinar. We're going to go over diffractive and metal lenses for wearable optics, and we'll give you a quick preview of that today. The first example we're going to do is coupling a fire a photonic crystal fiber into an SMF28 fiber going through a lens system in Optic Studio. This is advantageous because complex fibers and waveguide geometries cannot be accurately modeled in Optic Studio, and macroscopic lens systems cannot be optimized efficiently in Lumerical. 
by using both Lumerical and Optic Studio, we'll be able to go through this process very quickly and get a good output and increase our fiber coupling very efficiently. The nanoscale optics here will be using Lumerical's finite difference eigen mode solver to determine the physical properties of the optical modes supported by an arbitrary waveguide geometry. We also have Lumerical's eigen mode expansion and finite difference time domain solvers, which can be used to simulate light propagation through waveguide devices. The wave optics here will be using Optic Studio's physical optics propagation tool, which can propagate an arbitrary beam through a lens system and optimize the lens system based upon analysis of that beam's propagation. We're going to do this using the ZBF format, which can be easily exchanged now from Lumerical to Optic Studio. So we'll start on the nanoscale optic side, basically the two ends uh, highlighted in green that you see in this diagram. So for simple geometries like the SMN28 fiber, uh, you can probably do everything you need in Optic Studio. However, if on the two ends you have guided devices with nanoscale features, you will need to use solvers that are based on Maxwell's equations. So if you're interested in coupling light into a fiber or waveguide mode, you can use Mode Solutions Eigenmode Solver, which automatically calculates the typical properties such as an effective index, loss, group index, and dispersion from modes with an arbitrary cross-section. So in the image below here, I have a photon crystal fiber, which I've imported into the software. You can find the modes that are supported in this fiber. Uh, this mode profile can then be saved into a ZBF file for Optic Studio. Now, if you have more than a fiber or waveguide on the two ends of the lens system, uh, but an actual guided device that you need to simulate light propagation for, what you can do is use the ZBF file for Optic Studio as a source in any of Lumerical's propagation solvers. So as I mentioned before, Lumerical provides a variety of solvers for simulating light propagation. And uh, the reason is that uh, many guided devices in integrated optics can have many different sizes and geometries. And sometimes it's more efficient to use one type of solver over the other. So for example, Mode Solutions Eigen Mode Expansion, or EME solver, is ideal for very long passive components like an edge coupler, which can often get to hundreds of microns long. Uh, whereas FDTD solutions is really ideal for simulations of things like grading couplers, uh, which are not as large but require propagation in all directions. So the link that you see here is a nice white paper that talks about which propagation solver is ideal for various devices. And I should also mention that you'll be able to get a copy of the slides following the webinar. So I encourage you to take a look at some of the links that we're sharing. A quick overview of sequential mode in Optic Studio. Sequential mode traces a set of rays that assume each ray will hit the next surface in sequence. Again, this is used for designing imaging systems, afocal systems, and other sequential designs. And we have a huge number of analyses in this purely ray-based model, including both an FFT and a Huygens MTF and PSF analyses. We can analyze the aberrations, look at a spot diagram, look at an interferogram, and many other features of these lens systems. The tool we're going to be using right now is one of those subsets of analyses called physical optics propagations, which we use mainly for laser and fiber systems. This is using the wave model of light and very effective for looking at laser beams and fiber coupling when you optimize large lens systems. In this example, Optic Studio will take the fiber output from Lumerical and propagate it through the system using the physical optics propagation tool. The optical power will then be optimized to improve the fiber coupling, the spot size, power, and peak irradiance. You can also optimize for many other things. We're now going to perform a live demo in which Lumerical will use their mode solutions eigenmode solver to find the fundamental mode of a PC fiber. They're going to load that mode profile into the ZBF format. An optional step is to load ZBF files into the mode solutions and FDTD solutions. And then we're going to take the ZBF file that's created by Lumerical, import into Optic Studio, find the optimal lens design system for maximizing the fiber coupling from the PC fiber into the SMF fiber. So this is most solutions you see here. And here I have the photonic crystal cross-section of the fiber defined in the CAD. And the orange box that you see here is the Eigenmode Solver Simulation Region. On the right side is my analysis window. So here all I have to do is specify the wavelength I'm interested in, and then I can click on Calculate Modes. And here you can see uh, the different types of modes that are uh, supported by this geometry. And uh, you can also look at the effective index and loss of polarization. 
if you go to the frequency sweep, you can enter an arbitrary frequency range, and it's going to step through each of those frequency or wavelength. And um, after this, you can plot the effective index, group index, uh, group velocity, or dispersion uh, for this fiber. So for now, I'm just going to select the fundamental mode. I'm going to right-click on this and add the mode into a global deck. And then when you right-click on this, you can see that you can save this into a ZMAX beam file format. So once I do this, um, you can enter a name for this. And in the same folder, you'll see this file. Uh, and it's ready to go for uh, Kiel's side of the Optic Studio optimization. But uh, for now, I just want to quickly show you two other things that you can do. Uh, so this is basically the same setup as before, but here I have a fiber, and I can calculate modes of this fiber. And in the same deck, you can also right-click on this and click on Load from ZMAX Beam file. And um, here I'm just going to select a mode that Akil has generated for me. It's just a very simple beam. So I'm going to open this. And now you can go to the Overlap Analysis tab, uh, select the beam as well as the mode of this fiber, and you can calculate the overlap integral. Yeah, I'll just go to the other polarization here. So this really allows you to very quickly look at the overlap and power coupling between a mode that's calculated in mode solutions and a mode that's generated uh, from an Optic Studio simulation. And uh, the last thing I want to show is the if you want to actually simulate light propagation in, say, FDTD solutions, uh, there's also a custom source object that you can use. If you go to the source uh, settings, you can add an import source basically a custom source. And if you edit that, you can import a source, again, from a ZBF format. So I'll just use the same mode that Akil's provided for me, and I can open this, click OK. And now when you run the simulation, uh, it's going to use that ZMAC source, the, the field profile provided by ZMAX, as the source in your actual simulation. So if I look at the monitor result, you can see this mode propagate. OK, so now I'll hand this off to Akil to show you the lens system optimization side in Optic Studio. So thank you, Amy. Taking the file that Lumerical sent, we're going to be able to import a ZBF here in our physical optics propagation tool and then propagate it through this lens system here. Now I'll just go over our interface real quick, and then I'll show you exactly how that works. So here we have our lens data editor, which shows all of our different surfaces. And you can see that the surfaces are highlighted in the layout below when you select them. This is just a simple output from an incoming fiber going through one lens. This is a stop surface, which, isn't, which has no properties, and then a second lens, which will then focus the beam down into the second fiber. So the incoming beam can be seen here in our beam file viewer. This is the beam sent to us from Lumerical, and we're now going to propagate it through the system here. And by, to do that, we go into our physical optics propagation, which you can find under Analyze, and then Physical Optics. If you click on that, it'll open up the physical optics propagation window. Go to the beam definition tab inside of the physical optics settings. Choose beam type file, and then choose the file PC mode, which is what Lumerical sent us. We're now going to also enable our fiber coupling integral, and we set up the waste that we already knew. And then when I double click, it's, it's already showing the beam propagating through the fiber, but this is what we get. And again, we can see just the system set up here in our 3D layout. And now that we have the, the beam file into Optic Studio, we're able to optimize it. So I'm going to go to our Merit Function Editor. And here what I have is using the operand POPD uh, with data value 0, which stands for fiber coupling efficiency. We can see right now our fiber coupling efficiency is 0.122, so about 12%. And then below this, I have a default Merit Function just to make sure the lens system stays generally focused at the end. So this is easy to make. You can just make a default lens merit function in our optimization wizard. Uh, and then we use the operand again, POPD. Now we'll be able to optimize it. So I'm just going to go to our optimize tab, click optimize, and then here we're going to optimize it. Just wait a little bit. 
And I'm just going to stop it early because we can already see some changes. But if you let this run for a little while, you will get, keep getting better and better systems. So I'm just going to stop it here. You can see our merit function is now better. It's now 0.33 instead of 0.38. We're going to exit. I'll refresh the merit function. And we have a value of 23% fiber coupling instead of the 12% we had earlier. And you can also see I'm going to refresh this. And our lens system looks a little bit different as well. So thank you. And now we'll go back to Amy to talk about OLED displays. So the next application we'll look at is uh, OLED and LED display. So as we mentioned before, designing these type of devices require a combination of nanoscale and macroscale optics. So the individual pixels have sub-wavelength features, such as the thin dispersive layers, and often scattering structures that require electromagnetic field solvers. While the emission from the macroscopic device has to be done with a ray-based tool. For these applications, one can calculate the angular distribution of a pixel with Miracle's optical solvers, and then load this into Optic Studio in the form of ray sets, so that the Optic Studio simulation has fidelity to the actual design of the light sources. Here, for the nanoscale optics, you can either use FDTT solutions or the stack optical solver. And I'll go over both in the next few slides. So both solvers allow you to determine how the quantum efficiency and extraction efficiency of the device is affected by the presence of sub-wavelength scale features. On the macroscopic optic side, you can use Optic Studio's non-sequential mode to trace rays into any arbitrary optical system to analyze the imaging, illumination, scattering, and photoluminescent results uh, that are expected for real-world detectors. And again, the data being transferred here is a ray set, which can be calculated from the angular distribution of radiant power and loaded into Optic Studio to look at the incoherent emission from a macroscopic device. So let's start with the Miracle Stack Optical Solver. Uh, this is based on analytical methods, and it's used to determine the optical response of any multilayer stack. And uh, this is often much more efficient than direct simulations of Maxwell's equations for these planar systems. And it returns the radiance, luminance, tristimulus values, quantum efficiency, and extraction efficiency for any multilayer OLED or LED design. So link I have here is a nice video on exactly how to do this. And uh, the solver can accurately account for effects like multilayer interference, dispersive and biofringent materials, the position and orientation of the dipole emitters, as well as the spectrum, and can capture all the microcavity effects. But for designs that contain scattering structures in the layers, direct simulations of Maxwell's equations will be necessary. So here, Lumerical FDTT Solutions is really ideal for capturing the effects of wavelength scale patterning and its impact on the efficiency of the device. So the movies that are playing here shows the FDTT simulation of a dipole source in an OLED uh, with and without patterning. And you can see the difference in the way that light is being extracted out of the system. And uh, as you'll see in the demo that we'll be showing coming up, uh, both the stack optical solver and FDTT solutions can be used to calculate the angular distribution of radiation uh, for the device. And this information will be turned into a ray set and uh, imported into Optic Studio. Once we get a ray set from Miracle, we import that ray set into Optic Studio's non-sequential mode. As a refresher, non-sequential mode in Optic Studio traces geometric rays without assuming there's any predefined sequence of surfaces. This allows us to place multiple sources and detectors in any arbitrary position in space. And we trace these rays using Snell's law. However, we do also account for polarization, phase, and coatings. Applications of our non-sequential mode include illumination, biomedical devices, validation of sequential models, stray light testing, photoluminescence modeling, and AR VR displays, among many others. So for this demo, I'm going to start things off by using Lumerical Stack Optical Solver to calculate the angular distribution of radiant power uh, for a very simple OLED. So the design that I'm going to show here is based on what's uh, displayed in this image on the right. And uh, basically, we have an active layer sandwiched between the electron transport and hole transport layer. And uh, there's also an anode and cathode layer at the top and bottom. So I'm going to use this to generate uh, red, green, and blue ray sets uh, from the angular distribution of this OLED. And I'll hand that off to Akil to show you how to uh, use these ray sets as sources when designing a lamp in Optic Studio. 
So we'll start with the Stack Optical Solver. Uh, this is a new feature from our latest release. And uh, the current version doesn't have a UI component. But um, as you'll see, the script commands are actually very easy to use. So I'm going to start out by defining the frequency of interest. So here, this is just for the blue color at 460 nanometers. And uh, I'm only setting a single frequency now, but you can easily enter a range of frequencies. And uh, to do this, uh, you also want to define the refractive index for each layer. And this is based on exactly that image I showed before. And uh, this is the D is the thickness for each of the layers. So there's uh, sort of on the order of 10 nanometers to, uh, to 200 nanometers. And I'm going to set up one dipole right in the middle of the active layer. And I'm going to define the angular distribution. And all of this is uh, become inputs to the stack dipole function. And um, when you run this, uh, then you can get the results from stack dipole, which is the power per unit solid angle uh, for the blue pixel. So I'll just uh, quickly repeat this for the different colors. So I'll do this for green, which is 525 nanometers. Rerun this, and I'll do this for red. And if I just show them all together, so this is now the angular distribution for uh, blue, green, and red pixels. And um, I think one interesting to note here is that uh, the shapes are actually very different between the colors, and neither of them do uh, follow the standard lamp version profile. Uh, for example, for the red pixel on the right, uh, you actually get a bit of a peak at the large angles. Uh, whereas for green and blue, uh, this drops out very quickly after 60 degrees. And um, when you load these distributions uh, into Optic Studio, uh, you'll be able to look at what happens when you combine the different color pixels uh, with all this information and uh, what the final emission from the macroscopic device will look like. So the rest of the script here uh, just uh, generates, basically takes that angular distribution and generates the, the ray set in a form that Zmax can import. So if I run this, you'll get, uh, I'll get a text file, right? So once you uh, finish running the script, you'll get a text file in the same folder that has the ray set. And uh, this is a, a file that I'm going to hand off to Akil to show you the Optic Studio portion of the demo. Thank you, Amy. So now that Lumiracle has generated a ray set for us, we can take that ray set and implement it as a source file object in Optic Studio. Right now, I already have one displayed, but I'll show you how you can do that. Inside of our non-sequential component editor, you simply type in source, go to source file, and then once you've put the file in the correct folder, you're able to select it from our list of all of your source files. So here, I'll just select one at random. And then using this, we'd be able to enter how many analysis rays we want and what we're, where we want to position it. However, I already have some source files selected already, so I'll just delete this. So these are the three source files for red, green, and blue that were Lumerical sent over. And as you can see, we have 20 layout rays uh, displayed. However, we do have an array of these sources. So these sources are all in a 30 by one array, all three of them, which is why when you look at, uh, when you look at our shaded model, it looks a little bit like the sources are repeating, the rays are repeating instead of being in a completely random pattern. However, when you plot much more than 20 rays, for instance, if you plot 100 requests coming from one pixel, you can see that you do actually end up with the random pattern that you expect. So this is the reason the plot looks periodic is simply an artifact of the way that we're drawing the rays coming out of uh, an array of sources. Anyways, we're able to now trace these rays onto our detector, and we should see that we have an LED lamp that follows the same distribution as what we saw in the Lumerical software. So by tracing these rays, which I'm just going to confirm that we have the right number of rays to trace. So here I'm going to change our analysis rays to just 100 each, which should give us a pretty quick ray trace. And there we're done. So we should be able to view. So this is with only 100 rays. You can see that we just traced it quickly. Earlier, I traced an example that had 10,000 rays each. And I'm going to show you that one. So this is the example with 10,000 rays. Uh, 
And you can see that on the edge of this uh, system, we can see more red than we can see in the middle, which reflects exactly the distribution we saw from the Miracle software where the red had a higher intensity at the uh, more extreme angles. Now we'll go back to Amy. So before we move on to our next application, uh, I want to quickly show an example with scattering features in our FDTD solution solver. And uh, this is actually very common for OLED and LED designs uh, to, to, to have these scattering features. So we have these uh, wavelength scale scatterers like the photonic crystal pattern that you see here. Uh, you'll need to use a solver that directly simulates Maxwell's equations uh, like FDTD. So here uh, you would draw your geometry as well as all the materials directly in the CAD. And you can see that I have a dipole source here, which is these bidirectional uh, blue arrows, and that's placed right in the middle of the active layer. So I'm just going to run the simulation, and uh, you'll see a job manager that uh, shows you how much time is left. And this is uh, in 2D, so this is pretty quick. So when the simulation is done, uh, you'll see an MPEG file in the folder, and this is just uh, a recording of the, the field as a function of time. So here is showing the radiation of the dipole source uh, from the active layer uh, as a function of time. You can see that um, a lot of light does get extracted out, out of the device very quickly, but uh, a significant portion is still trapped in it. And the presence of these scattering features will certainly affect how much light gets extracted out of the system. And if you come back to the simulation here, you can go to the far field monitor and visualize the far field. So this is a, this is a broadband simulation. So I'm actually plotting the angular distribution as a function of wavelength. And this is basically the result that you can take and decompose into a ray set uh, to be loaded into Optic Studio. So the rest of the workflow is very similar to what um, Akil just showed. So last thing I want to mention for OLED and LED display is that uh, the workflow that we showed today uh, is still under active development. On the numerical side, we're still investigating a variety of different ways to convert angular emission distribution results into ray sets. And as you saw, this currently requires some additional scripting. So please do contact us at support at .com if you're interested in this application. And um, we would definitely like to provide this directly in the product at some point in the near future. And feedback from you uh, on this would be very valuable. So now I'll pass it on to Akil to talk about uh, our next application. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about rough surfaces, which is right now still a work in progress. So we're F FDTD solutions can be used to extract a BSDF function which is able to model surface structures. And they can actually create very complex nanoscale uh, surface structures. But right now, we don't have any good way to implement those in Optic Studio, especially if you're creating your own engineered surface. So we've worked together with Lumerical in order to be able to import BSDF files from Lumerical so that we can then display them in Optic Studio. You can actually see on the left here, we have uh, a rough surface in Lumerical, and then on the right we have an imported uh, BR, BSDF file in Optic Studio. Currently these aren't uh, the same file because it's still a work in progress, and we'd love to know if there's any application specifically that we should focus on, or what kind of interest we have from our customers. There's also going to be a poll at the end, which Kristen will talk about later, and you can give us some feedback there as well. So the last application we want to show today is diffractive lenses and meta lenses. And uh, we won't be covering this in a lot of detail because we have a whole webinar devoted to this topic next week. But And I would definitely encourage you to come to the webinar to learn more. So just a quick preview. Uh, so for lens design, it's really all about the precise control over the phase, amplitude, and polarization of light. Traditionally, this is done through lenses based on refractive optics, which requires very bulky lens systems and really does not work well for wearable applications uh, because there's very little potential for miniaturization. Uh, miniaturization is much easier with diffractive optics, which are based on interference and diffraction principles. Uh, this allows for much thinner elements, like the Fresnel lens you see on the right side. Uh, this is very popular among today's virtual reality and uh, augmented reality applications. 
So now meta lenses really take this one step further and use the idea of metamaterials and meta services uh, to give you almost arbitrary control over the phase amplitude and polarization of light. And uh, the idea here is to create effective macroscopic behavior through artificial unit cells or atoms uh, that are constructed with sub-wavelength features. Designers can basically design the unit cell based on the EM response they want uh, for the lens and achieve optical properties that are not possible with conventional optics. So our guest speaker for next week's webinar, uh, Dr. Karazani Najat, is one of the leading researchers in metal lenses uh, for visible uh, sort of visible applications. And uh, for these applications, both EM simulations and ray tracing are necessary uh, because metal lens contains sub-wavelength scale features uh, while the lens systems still need to be optimized using ray optics. So for simulating the light propagation through these metal lenses, uh, Lumerical's FDDD solver is really ideal and uh, you can use it to carry out uh, unicell simulations to see how the phase of the lens is affected by the duty cycle. And then you can use it to design and simulate uh, the full metal lens structure, uh, as you can see in the video here. So here, the phase of the light changes as the duty cycle changes, uh, and you get this focus in behavior. And uh, once the simulation is done, you can take the near field result across the top of the lens and load it into Optic Studio uh, using the same ZBF format that we talked about before. So inside of Optic Studio, again, as we talked about, we can take Lumerical's uh, ZBF format or ZBF file and then propagate it through Optic Studio in free space. The, exam the example image on the right is a diffractive beam coming from Lumerical software being propagated through free space and you can see as it goes through its focal point and then keeps propagating and we'll be talking more about that in next week's webinar. So our webinar on June 28th will be about diffractive and metal lenses for high performance wearable optical devices and it's going to be about how we can use Lumerical software and ZMAX software to speed up the design process there and make it as easy as possible. Our, we'll have a guest speaker from the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences um, and he's going to talk about how he's actively applying uh, of the software that we're using to work on his own projects right now. And we have a registration link below, but we'll also post the slides and post where you can register at the end of this webinar as well. Okay, so let's uh, do a quick summary before we move on to questions. So in this webinar, uh, Kiel and I went over some of the methodologies provided by ZMAX and Lumerical for coupling from nanoscale light to macroscopic. And uh, this can be done in a number of ways. For example, uh, the field information can be exchanged using the ZBF file format. And uh, that's probably the most common use case. And we showed a few examples that use this type of data exchange, uh, including coupling from lens to fiber and waveguides, as well as uh, diffractive lenses and meta lenses. Uh, for display type applications, you can exchange ray sets uh, via the source field object. And uh, this does require some additional scripting. And uh, the same is the case for other file formats, such as a uh, BSDF function for surface characterization. And uh, as I mentioned before, we're looking for feedback from end users about what type of file format they would like us to focus on uh, for this ZMAX and numerical interoperability. And uh, we would certainly like to build more and more of these functionalities directly into the products in the near future so that users don't have to go through um, additional scripting. All right. Thank you both very much, Amy and Akil. Um, so uh, to our listeners right now, if you are interested in learning more about uh, ZMAX or Lumerical uh, software products, uh, please check out the websites uh, shown on the screen here. Um, as both Amy and Akil have mentioned, these slides will be available for download shortly after this webinar, so you'll be able to click the links in just a moment. Uh, a lot of questions related to how would you would um, include nanoscale uh, structures in the middle of a design. And uh, so for now, uh, the best thing to do is probably to separate into uh, different parts is when you have nanostructures, uh, do that part in FDTD and then go to the lens system and then back and forth. And I think uh, the ZBF file exchange makes that pretty easy. So even if you have to do this over you know, several sections, uh, it's still quite doable. Uh, and certainly in the future, we would love to, to investigate how we can make this process a little bit easier, uh, maybe a more automated way uh, uh, to be able to, to exchange data between ZMAX and Lumerical 
And um, if anyone has any, uh, would like to sort of talk to us about a specific application when that's very useful, uh, please feel free to, to contact us on that. Uh, so we did get a question in uh, asking if the um, physical optics toolbox still is still limited to low divergence beams when using a Lumerical source. The answer is that the ZBF files coming from Lumerical still have to follow the same pop uh, algorithm assumptions as those created in Optics Studio. So yes, you would still need a relatively low divergence source. Right. So another question on the angled uh, source. So that should. I'll be fine. There shouldn't be any any more additional steps that you have to run to do that. Uh, we don't currently have an example with an angle propagation yet, but that's certainly something we can put together. But you should just be able to use the, the script, uh, ZBF Import Export, or uh, the UI uh, part to do that. And again, this, this will work in FDTD solutions. So if you set up custom source or an import source um, and import the file from the ZBF file, you should be able to, to run that in FDT and an angle. Just a question on uh, what are some of the computational challenges associated with uh, mutual optimization across nano macro span of scale? I might need a bit more information on on that one. Sort of, are, are you uh, asking more about um, you know the data exchange between the two or the actual dissimulation cost of that? I'm not quite sure if I completely understand the question, but if you can help us elaborate that a little bit more, uh, I'd be happy to answer it. So we have some questions about how to extract the uh, the f different fields in pop uh, inside of Optic Studio. So you can do that actually inside of the pop window itself, um, and you can just display either the phase uh, in the uh, x or y direction as well as the radiance in the x or y direction, um, and you are also able to get those values out uh, using pop D. Um, and you can look at our help files to look at exactly which quantity you want and how to extract that. Yeah, so we have a question on CMOS image sensors and how to optimize, optimize the lens and pixel design. I'd like to follow up that up with, with more information. There's, there's actually a really nice way to do this uh, very efficiently, and we have a, a lot of resources on how to do this on our website. Uh, so I. Um, Maybe I'll just, yeah, so if you go, to, I'll, I'll follow up with, with the person asking the question uh, with more information on this, but if you go to the Lumerica website um, and uh, look under the CMOS application, uh, we have a lot of information on, on exactly how to do this. So basically, how do you uh, take a, a, to optimize for the CMOS image sensors at the nanoscale level and then still be able to incorporate uh, the, the effects of um, the using a lens system to eliminate pixels. So that's certainly something we have a, a lot of information on. And I encourage you to, to look into that, app, that um, application example online for more information. But um, I'll follow up with um, the person who asked the question uh, to, on this as well. Uh, so there's one question about, is there contact information for follow-up questions? You can either contact um, ZMAX at support at zmax.com or uh, Amy, if you have a support line for Lumerical? Yeah, so I think that the support at lumerical.com is probably the best uh, place to email. Or uh, alternatively, you can uh, visit our Knowledge Exchange page, um, which is basically a forum that has um, a, a lot of users and, and a lot of our engineers are on there actively answering questions. So both those resources um, are, are very good for questions. OK, and then we have a question. Is ZMAX compatible with MATLAB? Uh, yes. you can. Uh, use our API to use MATLAB with um, almost all Optic Studio features. And we have another question, which versions of Optic Studio can accept numerical data? We've only tested it on Optic Studio 16 and uh, above. However, it should be compatible with m uh, all Optic Studio versions. Yeah, we have a, a question on the meta surface simulation, uh, whether we need to perform the FDD simulation on the entire meta surface in a single simulation. So it depends on a little bit. Uh, I think we'll go into more detail on this uh, next week. But um, what you do want to do is you, you don't want to start with a whole lens. So you would start with the unit cell simulations first. Uh, so that's assuming an infinitely periodic structure. Uh, and uh, basically optimize the individual unit cells first until you get the 
the, the, the phase that you want for that particular uh, unit cell. And then you would sort of repeat that for you know, multiple parameters that you want to do, sweep it, and then you can use that map to construct your metal lens. And um, at, sort of, at some point, you do want to do the full 3D simulation. And um, again, I'll show some of that uh, tricks for how to bring the memory down there. So we found that um, it, even in 3D FDTD, you can simulate radius of hundreds of microns typically sufficient for these sort of metasurface uh, simulations, and you can bring that information into ZMAX. But uh, we'll, we'll go into a lot more detail on that next week. And a question on what is the difference between exporting the near field from Lumerical to use in ZMAX versus using the far field feature in Lumerical? And that's a good question. So uh, in, in far field, the, the far field projection in Lumerical only allows you to project in free space. So um, I could, I could for example, I mean, for my metal lens sim simulation, I can do a, just a far field projection to look at where the focusing spot is um, is in free space. But um, typically, for, for these designs, they want to either layer multiple uh, lenses or they want to add additional lens system to correct for things like chromatic aberra uh, aberration, chromatic dispersion. So those things all have to be done. Uh, those sort of macroscopic lens systems uh, will have to be done in, uh, in ZMAX. But, uh, in Lumerical, you can do a free space propagation if you're just interested in seeing how where the lens focuses uh, in, in free space. Uh, so we have a question um, to clarify. Yes, Lumerical is a separate software from Optic Studio. This is just an interoperability between the two softwares. Uh, the, the demonstrations you saw from Lumerical are not something that's actually within Optic Studio itself. It's a completely different software package. We have another question asking what approach would you recommend for processing multiple ZBF files in Optic Studio for multi-mode systems? So if you have multiple ZBF files, there's not really a good way to combine them, but if you have multiple modes within one file, that should be fine and you can propagate that um, throughout your system. Yeah, and I think Akil answered this uh, question before in, in terms of what versions of the software is required for, for this um, interoperability feature. So as Akil mentioned, for Optic Studio, it's version 16 and beyond. And for Lumerical, it has to be the newest, uh, the newest uh, release, which uh, you can actually uh, download from our website today. Um, but yeah, it does have to be uh, the, the version from the June release. That would be FDD solutions and mode solutions uh, from our latest release. And just a question how you would differentiate between near and far field. Uh, so in, uh, in sort of the, on the numerical side, for, for near field, we really mean everything sort of within a, a few wavelengths um, of, of where the action's happening. And far field is, um, you know, tens of wavelengths or hundreds of wavelengths or further away. And uh, essentially, in the far field, everything's sort of plane waves at that point. So that's sort of how we distinguish between near field and far field. And uh, for, for, for art uh, simulation, so for for example, in FDD solutions, you would only simulate uh, the near field. You really never include the what we consider far field region in your actual simulation. What you want to do is you do a near field simulation and you project uh, you project the near field result into the far field, and that's uh, included in the software. And then, uh, so we have a question: um, Does pop support calculation of overlap? Integrals for arbitrary modes. Um, if you can create the ZBF file in Lumerical uh, to do this, then yes, you can propagate that file in Optic Studio. But if you have two separate ZBF files, you cannot propagate them together in Optic Studio. So you would need to have one Optic or one ZBF file in order to do that. And a, a question on whether uh, Lumerical can be used to simulate light scattering on gold nanostructures, taking account. Uh, plasmonic and nonlinear effects, uh, certainly. So, with uh, especially in FDTD solutions, which directly solves Maxwell's equations, uh, we really make no assumptions on uh, very little assumptions on um, on the type of physics that are involved. So, all the plasmonic effects, uh, nanostructures, and uh, even uh, a lot of nonlinear effects can be accounted for. And again, if you if you like more information on that, please uh, feel free to to reach out to us. And uh, especially for, for things like gold nanostructures, uh, metal nanostructures, and scattering, uh, plasmonic effects, nonlinear effects, this is uh, really one of our specialties. And another question on just uh, more information on how to extract ray set data from FD solutions into a source file object. So that's something we're, we're currently putting together. And um, I think, as, as we mentioned before, this is a bit of a, a 
And we we have a functionality right now. It take it takes a bit of scripting, and we're happy to provide some of that script for our, for our users. But um, eventually, we would like to build that into the software. But we will first like to get some feedback on how people, you know, like the the the, the script that we provide for extracting the race set. So if you're interested in uh, in this, again, please uh, email us, and we'll be happy to provide you those scripts and uh, and show you sort of how to do this. Uh, so there are several questions asking about very specific optical systems and uh, how you'd be able to set those up. Feel free to contact us. Um, I'm not going to go through each single one, but uh, from what it looks like, we are able to model most of the systems that are um, being asked about. So feel free to contact us if you have any specific system that you want to know how to model that using POP at support at cmax.com. Uh, just have a question on operating system. So I'll let Akil answer the, the um, Optic Studio side, but for Miracle, uh, we can handle all operating systems, so Mac or Linux or uh, Windows. Um, yeah, and then so Optic Studio only runs on Windows, um, so you would need, uh, however, we have launched a new cloud product which can run on any browser. So if you don't have Windows and you don't have a way to run Windows on a Mac PC, you can also run it through the cloud um, using Optic Studio Cloud. And feel free to contact our sales team about how to get a hold of that. Question from a university instructor about using ZMAX at, um, for university courses. Uh, I believe that the, uh, the cost is almost free or at least very cheap for university uh, professors. So feel free to, again, contact our sales team, and they'll be happy to walk you through our educational support program. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure if I understood this. So there's a, are there plans to exchange optical setup stacks between Lumerical and ZMAX. Uh, again, if I could get a little more information on that uh, in terms of what you mean by optical setups and stacks, that, that would be great. Um, I don't know, Kyo, if you have any uh, thoughts on that one. Not question? exactly. Yeah, just uh, uh, are there any plans to exchange optical setups uh, slash stacks between Lumerical and ZMAX? I'm not quite sure sort of you mean on the geometry side or, or something different. But yeah, if you can clarify that a bit more for us, we'd be happy to to answer that. Um. So there's a question how to distinguish between coherent and incoherent illumination simulations. Uh, in Optic Studio, uh, all of the rays that you so it's a completely ray based model, so there's no true coherence, but each ray has its own phase. Um, and takes into account polarization effects. So if you start all the rays from one uh, coherent from one coherent source that's collimated, they should stay coherent up until they meet the first interface, and then whatever effects should happen at the interface will. Yeah, sorry. There's just a there's some clarification on what what they uh, the computation challenges for mutual optimization across nano and macro uh, span and scale. So yeah, so right now um, the optimization. So both both software provides some uh, optimization built-in optimization procedures, but right now that's happening independently. So in Zmax, you would optimize you would run the optimizer to to optimize the portion in Zmax and FDTD. You can use the built-in optimization to optimize your structure in FDTD. But right now we don't have a a, a way to do a sort of a simultaneous optimization using both tools. And again, that, that's certainly something that um, we would like to explore further uh, in the future. And yes, so, so the Lumerical license, the new release can be downloaded using the existing license. So whenever you upgrade to the new versions, uh, you, the existing licenses all uh, hold. So we have a question saying, is it correct to use multivariable optimizations for distances between lenses using merit, the merit function in ZMAX uh, POPD? So yes, POPD is another operand that you can use in the merit function. You can use it to optimize a full lens system just as you can with any other operand. Um, and you should be able to optimize in exactly the same way. You're just using a separate operand, which is taking into account the POP calculations rather than just the ray tracing calculations. Uh, and then there was a follow-up, can you only optimize one variable each time? You can set the same variables that you would set in any ray tracing optimization. It's just using the pop data to optimize instead of using the ray data to optimize. 
Okay, so again, um, thank you, Amy and Akil, and, and for all of you who are watching, um, uh, just a reminder too, uh, you're welcome to attend another edition of this webinar where we'll have a, a second uh, follow-up Q&A session um, later this evening. So uh, thank you and have a good rest of your day.